Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. Good morning, and welcome to the United States Army War College International Fellows Hall of Fame induction ceremony. My name is Colonel Rob White, and I am the director of the International Fellows Program. This morning, we are privileged to welcome Major General Jerome Mbazo, Chief of the General Staff, Albanian Armed Forces. General Mbazo graduated from the United States Army War College in 2006. Today, we will induct this strategic leader into the International Fellows Hall of Fame. With us today is the Commandant of the United States Army War College, Major General William E. Rapp, and his wife, Debbie. War College Ambassador Daniel Shields, Deputy Commandant Colonel Dave Funk, Colonel Bal Bo Balkavage, U.S. Army College, War College Chief of Staff, Dr. Lance Betros, Provost of the United States Army War College, Dr. Richard Lackawin, Dean of the School of Strategic Land Power, as well as numerous Army War College staff and faculty. We would also like to extend a special welcome to Brigadier General Stephen Ferrari, Deputy Commanding General Support, 42nd Infantry Division, New Jersey National Guard. General Bazo is accompanied today by his wife, Florinda, his son, Miloso, his daughter, Orata, and Colonel Eduard Bala, Albanian Defense Attaché. The U.S. Army War College established the International Fellows Hall of Fame on 1 October 1987. The Hall of Fame provides a prestigious and visible means of honoring international fellow graduates who have attained, through military merit, the highest positions in their nation's armed forces, or who have held an equivalent position by rank or responsibility in a multinational military organization. Today, General Bazo becomes the 58th inductee into the U.S. Army War College International Fellows Hall of Fame. General Bazo has exemplified the ideals of the Army War College through his leadership of his nation's armed forces, and in doing so, has greatly honored his alma mater. His connection to this institution remains significant as we face the challenges of the 21st century together. The achievements of our honored guest also bring credit to the International Fellows Program here at the Army War College and highlight the fact that armies around the world send us only their best and brightest officers. This ceremony today demonstrates how our international friends who study, work, and socialize together as students at this institution typically move on to assume important positions of trust and responsibility in their own countries. Nine years ago, when General Bazo attended the War College, this institution made a difference in his life and career. To look at that year from a strategic point of view, George W. Bush served as our 43rd president. In world events, the insurgency in Indonesia ended with the brokering of the peace accords in Helsinki. Militant group Hamas wins 74 of 132 seats in the Palestinian legislative elections. A 7.6 magnitude earthquake struck Pakistan. And after weeks of student-led protests, French President Jacques Chirac repeals a controversial labor law that would have made it easier for employers to fire workers under the age of 26. Here in the United States, John Glover Roberts, Jr. became the 17th and current Chief Justice of the United States. President Bush signs the Central American Free Trade Agreement, which removed trade barriers between the United States and numerous Central American countries. The Patriot Act was renewed, and the movie Crash wins the Oscar for Best Picture. In other news, unemployment was 4.6%. The cost of a first-class stamp was 39 cents. A Big Mac was $33.15 and a gallon of gas to average $2.15. In sports, the Chicago White Sox swept the Houston Astros to win their first World Series in 88 years. The Pittsburgh Steelers defeated the Seattle Seahawks 21-10 in Super Bowl 40. In the NBA, it was the Miami Heat over the Dallas Mavericks four games to two. And in the FIFA Cup World Cup, International defeated Barcelona one to nothing. The U.S. Army War College class of 2006 had 40 international fellows, 22 of whom have been promoted to general officer rank. Representing some of those 22 are Lieutenant General Nikolai Chiuka, Chief of Staff of the Romanian Armed Forces, Lieutenant General Anil Chait, Chief of the Integrated Defense Staff, India, Major General Takayuki, Director, Defense Plans and Policy, Japanese Defense Forces Command, and Seminar Mate of Major General Bazo, Brigadier General Herman Gerardo of Colombia, Defense Attaché in Belgium, 
and Brigadier General Mikhail Popov, Special Operations Brigade Commander, Bulgaria. U.S. Army classmates include Major General Jimmy O'Keenan, Deputy Director General Operations, U.S. Army Medical Command, and the Chief of the U.S. Army Nurse Corps, Fort Sam Houston. Brigadier General John W. Charlton, Vice Director, Joint Force Development, J-7, Joint Staff in Suffolk, Virginia. Major General Richard W. Thomas, Director of Healthcare Operations, Defense Health Agency Headquarters, Falls Church, Virginia. Brigadier General John E. O'Neill, Director for Logistics, Engineering and Security Cooperation, J-4 U.S. PACOM. Brigadier General Jody J. Daniels, Deputy Director for Intelligence and Knowledge Development, United States Army Africa Command. Brigadier General Daniel G. Mitchell, Deputy Commanding General for Support, Installation Management Command, San Antonio, Texas. Then, Lieutenant Colonel Bazo attended the War College with his family. During his time at the War College, General Bazo was a proud member of Seminar 15. Oh, that, that was weak. <laughs> General Bazo was heavily engaged in many social activities, such as the ambassador welcome reception, appearing to be calling his own home run shot in softball, attending a professional baseball game in Harrisburg, and dominating at the International Fellows version of American Idol, in which General Bazo made it through to the final round with a stirring rendition of Sweet Caroline by Neil Diamond. General Bazo also took part in many activities with his seminar mates, receiving awards, enjoying the camaraderie of a gourmet meal at Gettysburg, assembling two hours early prior to departure for the class trip to New York, and serving as Seminar 15 softball scout to detect weaknesses on opposing teams. Here in this photo, we see Major General Bazo captivating his seminar mates with an informative briefing about his home country. Later in the academic year, Major General Bazo's son, Milosau, came back to join the family in Carlisle. In this photo, we see General Bazo with another international fellow ready to take the field during the annual Jim Thorpe competition. Representing the Army War College in his favorite sport, soccer, Major General Bazo still claims to this day to have scored a hat trick in the deciding match. But unfortunately, no footage exists to confirm this impressive feat. Here we see Team Bazo in a proud moment for the family immediately following graduation. Today, Major General Jerome Bazo would join 57 other distinguished fellows as the 58th inductee into the United States Army War College International Fellows Hall of Fame. Throughout his career, General Bazo has been at the forefront of change, strategic thought, and leadership. General Jerome Ambazo was born in Tirana, Albania. His career started as a student at the Albanian Military Academy in Skender Bay. While at the academy, Major General Bazo was a model cadet, as evidenced in this photo. Notice the sharp, high and tight haircut and the open top button of his dress shirt. But despite these, these shortcomings, General Bazo managed to graduate from the academy and was commissioned in 1985 as an active duty infantry officer. After his first assignment as a platoon leader in an infantry company, Major General Bazo later became a battalion executive officer following duty as an instructor at the infantry branch and troop school. In 2004, as a senior lieutenant colonel, General Bazo became the first commandant of the Albanian Military University responsible for intermediate level officer education. The same facility that was formerly the Albanian Military Academy he attended as a cadet from 1981 to 1985. Promotions and successive positions of greater responsibility followed for this great officer. Promotion to Colonel in 2006 to Brigadier General in 2012 with an appointment as the Defense and Security Advisor to the President of Albania. On 7 November 2013, by decree of the President of the Republic of Albania, he was promoted to Major General and Chief of Staff of the Albanian Armed Forces. During this time as Chief of Staff, Major General Bazo has been busy with numerous tasks, such as selecting the new Albanian Chief of Staff's helicopter, the retelling of his soccer exploits on Indian field, 
and being the first to test fire the new Albanian infantry assault rifle. In this photo, we see Major General Bazo meeting with his counterpart from Italy, Lieutenant General Graziano, a 1997 graduate of the Army War College and a member of the International Fellows Hall of Fame. Whatever the task, setting, or challenge, we are certain Major General Bazo expertly uses the skills learned here at the Army War College to promote the cause of freedom and democracy. General Bazo, thank you for returning to the United States Army War College and joining us today. On behalf of Major General Rapp and the staff and faculty and the United States Army War College class of 2016, we offer you our deepest Congratulations on your designation as the 58th member of our International Fellows Hall of Fame. General Bazo, General Rapp, I now invite you to come up on stage for our Hall of Fame induction. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain seated as General Rapp inducts Major General Jerome Bazo into our International Fellows Hall of Fame. The United States Army War College, Carlisle Barracks, Pennsylvania, in recognition of outstanding military achievement, hereby inducts into the United States Army War College International Fellows Hall of Fame, Major General Jerome Mbazo, Chief of the General Staff of the Republic of Albania, a 2006 graduate of the United States Army War College. By order of the Commandant, Major General William E. Rapp, dated 28 September 2015. Still good morning, two more minutes. <laughs> good morning to everyone. I'm really delightful to be here, back again at the great Army War College. Believe me, it really feels great, emotional to be back in this prestigious institution. But I'm going more official now. General Rep, Ambassador Shields, General Ferrari, Mrs. Ferrari, all faculty, staff members, Provost Bitro, Mr. Bremer, Professor Kerr, Carol, my professor from my time. I don't know if I miss anyone, but it's also it's a special friend coming all the way from Kentucky here is Colonel Bosch. My, my mate, my teammate, used to be the chief of Office for Defense Cooperation in Albania. Thank you for coming. And dear, dear class of 2016, and most of all, my fellow seminar members of 15, where are you <laughs> sitting here? You, anyway. <laughs> you did the job, but anyway, I remember that we had a pledge at my time, not letting one another down. Therefore, I'm counting on you, on your support. If you ever see me struggling with my words during my speech, you know what to do. Just wave your hand or give a strong applaud to ease the tension down. <laughs> at, at my time, there was a paper as a pre-core pre course requirement in my time. I'm, do, I'm, not, I'm not sure if it's still available now. Which included also individual learning plan. Ironically, I entitled this paper at the time, Getting to the Hall of Fame, a Year of Study and Experience at the U.S. Army War College. Well, this is true. You can check and prove that with Mr. Bremer and Emilio, if they are still 
they still do have their hands on the archives. <laughs> At the time, we had also an elective of public speaking. And I heard that it's still around. Carol just proved that to me again. And I heard that uh, my predecessor here and my classmate, General Chuka, was inducted in, uh, during, uh, with a similar ceremony some days ago or last week. And he just mentioned that he was, uh, he was sorry, he was a little bit, uh, he had some resentment, I, I'm not sure, but he said that he would have, if he had the chance again, he would have chosen to, to follow this uh, public speaking elective. What I did, I did the contrary, I took that elective. And it was an all year long experience. Every, every given Tuesday, seven o'clock in the morning until 8.30. It's a whole long, long year seminar. Are, is, is it still available, Carol? Carol? So how many of you are taking this seminar? I mean, international fellows, let alone the Americans. No international or that? Congratulations, just follow. Go, go there, go there, it's, it's, it's good, it makes you good. You will start, you will start later on, if not in military career, you will have a, a public speaking career or ending up great actors <laughs> in Hollywood or wherever. And there are moments in life when it is uh, hard to find the right words. I, I'm trying to make some, some, some fun to ease down the, the tension and the emotion that I'm, I'm feeling being in this uh, prestigious auditorium. I had had my chances of speaking publicly to different audiences, but never made it to this prestigious auditorium that is called Bliss Hall Auditorium. Now, with some uh, nuances, it was always called the, the big sleeping room or something like this. <laughs> so having in mind, with your permission, General Rep, we, we, we noticed together there are some renovations done to the room, but it still have the same look. So let us make a deal and settle for renovated big sleeping room <laughs> from now on. Let us settle with that. So how do I feel right now? Privileged, humbled, and deeply honored to be inducted into International Fellow U.S. Army War College. So thank you very much for organizing such a great ceremony. It really means a lot to me personally, to my family that is here with me today, my better half, Florinda, my son, Milosao, and my daughter, Orarta. Thank you very much. What we accomplished in our careers would have never been possible without the support of our families and without the sacrifices they do. We can't thank them enough. And remember, you'll never get the chance to pay them back. The ceremony is also an indication of recognition for the achievements of my armed forces, the Albanian armed forces. That's the way I see it. Now, what it means a year at the US Army War College. I already wrote a paper on it. However, it is a great time offered to each and every one of you. It is a time that if used properly and effectively, will provide you the right tools to reinvent yourself. It is the time to reflect upon yourself, find the right balance, and plan your future accordingly. Pursuing academic and military studies in this state-of-art education institution for strategic leaders of the US Army is all what an individual can ask for. An institution where you gain professionally, you get a wider and different perspective on international relations, security policy, strategic leadership and management, and the use of instrument of national power to achieve national objectives. On this note, considering the function that I carry, and also having in mind that you might have experienced or will experience in the future, I would use this opportunity to share with you some of my reflections on civil military relations. I, I'm not sure if Professor Ulrich is in somewhere in the aud audience. Mary Beth, if, you, if she's still around, the professor of civil military relations, I have to apologize her. I'm taking a little bit of her expertise, maybe entering to her fiefdom, but I'm continuing, having in mind the, care, the position that I carry. 
the function. I know that I'm aiming too high, as I said, having in mind that you are reading the great masters of military theory and strategy right now. We in Albania, as many other countries that have chosen liberal democracy as the way of governance, believe in the democratic control of the armed forces or the, the well-known civilian oversight over the military. It's not that we have a long history of that. Instead, it's been just a quarter of a century. And as you might assume, we started from the scratch, so to speak. Witnessing firsthand the transition from dictatorship to democracy taught us that it is a process of dual learning. And with us, the military, it means to learn more. The key word for this process is adaptation, is a word that I was listening earlier on being the key word even in this institution. And believe me, that will follow and will accompany and escort you throughout your career. The civil-military relations had been already defined since early in history when Sun Tzu and later on Clausewitz argued that military organizations were primarily servants of the state. Samuel Huntington, in his well-known book, the, the Soldier and the State, continued on this path with his two theories of political control over militaries. The first one, subjective control, primarily sees mi military as militia. Once the danger passes, soldiers return home and serve the community. The second one, objective control, suggests a military separated from political system and focused on developing its own expertise. The military provides advice when asked and limited within its area of competence. While Huntington preferred the objective model, I would apparently prefer that the most senior generals had to have a thorough grasp of national policy and that they must be, become statesmen without ceasing to be generals. Just noting that Clausewitz wrote it. I believe that we are in between two models, also for a simple fact. We came from an oppressing communist regime that maintained the large armed forces where the military was a profession only for officers. No NCO corps and only conscripts. When the system changed, we realized that the answer for establishing dominance of civilians over the military was the development of a military as a profession. If you notice the picture that Colonel White showed on, and we were joking at my, my picture during the military academy time, did you notice there were no ranks? There were no symbols at all. That was the way that we stayed for 25 years, abolishing the ranks in the military and then reinstated them back when, after 90s, so when the regime collapsed. So here it comes the first adaptation, ladies and gentlemen, that of the organization itself. First in size, from 60,000 to less than 10,000 today. Then the fabric of it, building the core of the NCOs and introducing professional soldiers. These reforms, conditioned not only by the civilian control over armed forces, but also from the changes of the internal and external security environment, made our organization to adapt itself and get ready for further challenges. These measures also included the membership and integration into the North Atlantic Organization, that were NATO for Albania. The second adaptation is the one that happens at the individual level, from the culture of being under the command and authority of a dictator who represented the full spectrum of governance at the time, we had to move to a culture of being under the command and authority of democratically elected civilians, also generally known as political masters. It is exactly what Georges Clemenceau, the former prime, French prime minister, who was attributed to have said that, you know, that the war is too important to be left to the hands of generals. However, these generals are trusted to provide advice to their political masters. And here it comes the difficult part again. It is not just that the politicians might be inexperienced with military affairs, but when their political agenda comes first, they will require advice according to their needs, which by the way, a senior military leader is not necessarily always prepared to provide. 
We all know that speaking the truth is a must in our profession. Now, yet finding an equilibrium of these relations will prove more beneficial to the organization and themselves. The overarching goal of such relation must be to achieve a win-win situation rather than a zero-sum game. Also, my fellow chairman of, of Joint Chiefs of Staff of United States Armed Forces, General Dempsey, who just handed over his function last Friday, in an interview once recently, said that, uh, and, I'm quote, and I'm quoting him, we literally come at this from two different cultures. People ask me if I am the same chairman I was three years ago, and the answer is no. One of the things I have learned is to find a way to bridge the gap between these two different cultures. And I couldn't agree more with him. To this regard, I have always enjoyed excellent relationship with my Minister, minister of Defense, working together for the better of our organization. Decision and policy making are not an explicit domain of the minister. At the end of the day, our endeavor is common, strong and capable armed forces for their mission to the country and to the alliance they're part of. I feel good when, uh, as a joint team, we defend in parliament and other government bodies the laws and strategies for the Albanian armed forces. The third dimension of civil-military relation is about the public in general. We as an organization work and function on taxpayers' money. The least we can do is being accountable in front of them on how we spend their money. On the other hand, we must gain their trust and seek their support in our endeavor. It's from there that we recruit our men and women in uniform. To conclude this part, ladies and gentlemen, we all know that politics, policy, and military are tangled together at their highest levels. Militaries will look for objectives, while politicians will look for options. Definitely, there will be times of friction between them. There will be generals who will try to dictate or speak their mind out in public or elsewhere. However, there are ways to keep this normal friction from becoming a serious problem or a crisis in civil and military relations. Nonetheless, public at large recognize the importance of the militaries and their deeds. Anytime I address this matter, it comes to my mind, to my mind the famous poem written by the British, British poet, the, I, I hope known to all of you, Rudyard Kipling dedicated to the common soldier named Tommy Atkins. Is there any British officer here? Um, you know, Tommy Atkins. I have always wondered how could it be possible for a portrait to be so meaningful and contemporary to the actual day? I had the pleasure, I did have the pleasure and the privilege to translate this poem in Albanian some years ago. So I would like to share just the last verses with you. They give the whole point and grasp the whole point that I was trying to make so far. And I'm sharing that with you. For it's Tommy this and Tommy that and chuck him out the brute. But it's savior of his country when the guns begin to shoot. And it's Tommy this and Tommy that and anything you please. And Tommy ain't no blooming fool. You bet that Tommy sees. Now very brief, so it was good, huh? I see you, yeah. <laughs> I was expecting this thing. I told you, ma'am, Carol is, we'll get there. Now very briefly, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would like to give you just a very brief snapshot of the Albanian Armed Forces. Small in size, and rightly so, as I mentioned earlier, with the needed capabilities for its size and role, they are in a continuous transformation to fit the 21st century challenges. A country almost the size of Maryland, a member of NATO since 2009, our Armed Forces are walking alongside, alongside allies and partners this hard path of transformation. Being small as we are hasn't been the excuse to contribute less to the Alliance. The Albanian Armed Forces have been a steady contributor to the Alliance mission and operations, from Afghanistan to Balkans, from the threats coming from East 
and challenges coming from the south. We have stand together ever since. Albanian officers and NCOs proudly serve at various NATO command structures and headquarters. Our professional military education institutions are becoming more attractive to our allies and partners. For some years now, a senior course on security and defense studies has brought together military officers and civilians from countries in the region and beyond to share their views and contribute to the security of the region at large. Before I end my remarks, there, are, there is one more thing that has had a tremendous impact on the Albanian Armed Forces. As part of the state partnership program with New Jersey National Guard, we have sent combined military advisory teams to Afghanistan for few rotations in a row from 2011-2014. Meanwhile, we are sending our officer cadets to New Jersey National Guard Officer Candidate School to receive education and training, and after graduation, getting commissioned and serving as second lieutenant in the Albanian Armed Forces. I would like to take this opportunity to recognize the presence of Brigadier Ferrari, the New Jersey National Guard representatives. Thank you for coming. And it's, it's, another, it's another way of showing the commitment that this second marriage of ours will last forever now. I say second marriage just for the benefit of you, because before 2000, the year 2000, we had an, a different partner at the time. It was South Carolina. But something changed in the policy, and that's why I called it the second marriage. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming, General Ferrari. Dear class of 2016, you are going to establish relation and friendship among your peers. Please maintain and forge those links especially with international fellows, and I'm speaking to the American students. Because who knows, you will need to cooperate again in some other places and other functions in the future. You may solve real life issues much faster and easier with your friends rather than through diplomatic channels. Now, as you understood, I hate the cliches, but uh, what can I do? Even at the NATO military committee, chod sessions, the admin officer there, who is a general, always said that I'm the only obstacle between you and lunch. You know, it's a cliche again, but I have to say it. So I'll try to get off your way and conclude my speech. I wish you a wonderful year here at the United States Army War College, a successful completion of the course, and every success in your future life. You are the hundredth course if I made my calculation correct, of this college. Please make it count. Take the full advantage of it and make history. And please, please don't let them, the other services, I mean, take the Jim Thorpe Competition Cup away from you. <laughs> so don't do that. Or I'm just, as the old saying goes, don't let the bastards grind you down. <laughs> it would be an unforgivable disaster. <laughs> it would be a shame. Don't let that happen. So thank you very much all. God bless the United States Army War College. God bless you all. God bless your countries. God bless Albania and its armed forces. Thank you very much and have a good day. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the playing of Hands Across the Sea and the departure of the official party.
Ladies and gentlemen, this is concluding the International Hall of Fame induction. Thank you for attending.